I'm out on site and I've caught up with Eddie from Pegasus Electrical and I'm looking at that panel, Eddie, and as a standard electrician, I want to suggest to myself, I'm a little bit weak at the knees. Are you going to talk me through the basics of panel wiring just to help me out? I can talk you through a little bit of it, yeah. Okay, was this panel built here on site or was this built back in the uh, the, the vast factory that is uh, Pegasus Electrical? Yeah, we built this off site, um, so it's, it's all ready when we come to site. Uh, there's only a couple of things that need finishing off on it, like the front switch, which we leave till afterwards, top tip, uh, because if the wall isn't perfectly square, then the switch won't line up from the shaft to the front of the door. Oh, that's a top tip. Yeah. Now, we're in a boiler room, so this has got a whiff of being some sort of heating control system, is that correct? That's it, yeah. So, do you want to just talk us through basically what's on the front of the panel? Oh, we've got our uh, uh, switches, we've got these key switches, so the... Um, Clients who are not supposed to be messing with them ain't going to be turning them on and off. We've got normal switches where they can turn it from summer to winter um, and a test lamp. So just talk me through this one here then. So what's the idea of having the, the key switch then on that section there? On this section here? Yep. It's so it's uh, when you put it uh, keyed off into the auto position, it's left there. So if somebody don't switch it over to hand, and then leaving it on hand or switching it to off and leaving it on off when you want it or not wanting it. So in other words, way be. yeah, another yeah. energy control system really by taking it out of yeah, the... Just simple can, energy control. Yeah, nobody can whip round here and just put it permanently on. Yeah. Okay, let's open it up and see the work of art which is inside this panel. It is quite breathtaking, so just take a moment just to... Exactly the same as I did. Look at that, fantastic. Right, let's start on this side here. Okay, our old friend the ferrule jumps out at me there. So, class five conductors all ferruled up? Yes, no numbered. Okay, what's the thinking behind so many numbers on so many conductors? Well, the numbering system is uh, how the schematic works. So, in each, uh, each cable or link of cables will have a number and that will work in a certain order and, and so you'll get your uh, the drawings come together with your panels. Okay, so the drawings left with the customer? Yes, they're left with the clients, yeah. Do you keep a set yourself? Yeah, there's always a set yourself, yeah. Okay, so if I came to site and there was an issue, I could look at this schematic drawing, hopefully work out maybe number 24 and where it goes, and maybe that indicate a lamp or switch has failed. I can perhaps trace it through to obviously use a logical approach. I would suggest for many of us, fault finding in here looks a little bit of a, a headache and a nightmare, but it, the better you've laid it out and the better the numbering system, obviously the easier it will be to sort out a fault. So any top tips in here? So what's your what's your go-to method of installing the wiring system? So if I look down here at this section here, I can see that our conductors are pretty logical there where we've got our protective conductor line and neutrals together. Have you not thought about putting maybe a separate earth bar that we're used to seeing in distribution boards and consumer units, Eddie? No, I'd rather it this way because it, it, it is logical that that um, CPC is for that particular uh, either a piece of equipment or a pump or boiler, um, it runs with it, so, so they're so, easy to find. Yes, yeah, so if I was taking out, say, a pump, I would be taking out the line, the neutral and the protective conductor that are side by side rather than rooting this around is, trying yeah. to get to a protective conductor. Yeah, this is associated with that piece of kit. Okay. Any surge arresters in here? Yes, we've got uh, an SPD over the far right hand corner there next to the main switch. And is that a type two surge arrestor? Yes it is, yeah. Was that required or was that something you were just putting in? Well it is technically required now because we've got, got PLCs and stuff like this in here or logic controllers. Okay. Have you put an indicator detector on that at the moment or is that something that maybe we could do in the future to have a failed and a lamp will indicate? Oh we have uh, one on the front. Okay, so if that lamp illuminates, it suggests that the surge arrestor is beyond its life, yes? That's correct, yeah. Okay, that's a nice yeah, little touch. So again, somebody's coming in here thinking, my heating system might not be working, but it might just be that surge arrestor has expired its life. What else have we got in here you want to highlight for us? Our contactors. And what are these contactors doing? These do the pumps and the solenoid valve. And these are, by the looks of things, they are class two conductors, are they? Yes. Are we using any sort of crimps on the end of those? Yeah, we're using Four. crimps on these and ferrules as well. So depending on whether it's the power side or whether it's the control side. But when we say ferrules, that's class five conductors when we're putting those other crimps on the class twos, yes? Yeah. And is that for a better electrical connection or because it's easier to insert and remove those conductors? What's your thinking behind that one? A better electrical connection. Okay. Anything else you want to highlight in this panel for us? It's a beautiful job. It must have been Steve's work. I always think it's your work, but <laughs> I had to move Steve out the way in order to get into this panel. Yeah. Overcome protection just, up here? Yeah, overcome protection. Also got auxiliaries on them. 
which gives us our faults on the uh, on the front of the panel. Okay, just show me that, please. Uh, you'll have your trip lights. So this will indicate to me what has happened. That the MCB, the overcome protected device, has tripped. Okay, so in real terms, no one's got to get into that panel without a skill level because the front of the panel is going to tell them everything that's happening behind the panel. Yeah, uh, theoretically, uh, if a phone call comes through to say, oh, um, eating's not working, we can say, well, what lights are lit up, if any lights at all, and then we can work from that process and we'll have an idea of what's, uh, what's occurring. So there's a chance that Pegasus Electrical can do the fault finding over the phone, open the panel up, I expect it to be, say, top left-hand corner, I expect it to be one of your overcurrent protection devices in the down position, yeah. and you can get somebody to reset it, at least try the starting process to re-energise the circuits before you arrive. Because yeah. these panels are installed by you all over the country, aren't they? Yeah, all over the UK, yeah. yeah. So a bit tricky if you get one in Scotland for a breaker that's just tripped when you can actually solve that problem over the phone, yeah? Oh yeah, definitely. If you want to catch up with Steve and Eddie installing the wiring system at Lineside Studios, check out the video on screen now.